What do I define about growing up? You know what I'm saying? Like, feeling better, living better, better location. What he failed to tell you was, when you're on my time, I can reclaim it. I, he left that out, so I'm reclaiming my time. Please, you know, respond. Are you I mean, who are you rooting for tonight? I'm rooting for um everybody black. I'm betting on black tonight. I'm sorry for the realness. Hey, everybody. It's Whitney from WhitneyDanielle.com and NetworkingSpill.com. And this is a spill episode for February. I'm really excited because, you know, this is a month of love, relationships. We also celebrate Single Awareness Day on February 14th. And I wanted to bring on a special guest to discuss something really important. We're going to talk about self-love. We're going to talk about self-preservation. And we're going to talk about relationships in general, whether you're single or not. And this is a high level sort of dialogue and reminder, right? Hopefully there'll be some affirmations that you can remind yourself of during this episode on really how to make yourself a priority, how to love yourself and how to keep things going so that you can keep things going in other parts of your world, right? With other people, and all of your other relationships, because essentially it starts with you. So I brought on a relationship coach because why not? I've known this person for about three years now, and I've had a really close relationship with her and I've watched her grow her business. I've watched her write books and do tons of YouTube videos and help a lot of people in their relationships, whether they're single or not. And it's been a great ride. And I really wanted to have her on to give us her expertise, give us her information and, and her opinions, right? Some of her stories on relationships. This is a great time of year to do that. I think it's perfect too, because we're starting the year off kind of on the right foot with this, because I think if you work on the relationship with you, it makes it easier for everything else to kind of unfold in the way that you essentially want it to. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to Mrs. Marshawn. Marshawn is a life and relationship strategist. She's an author. She's written her book. The book is called Reignite Your Relationship by Seven Times or by 7X. So um, I've, I've read the book. I've written a little review on Amazon for it. I really recommend it. We'll link everything in the show notes. And this is going to be important because you might mess up the spelling of her last name which is why I'm leaving it all in the show notes as well. All you have to do is go to networkandspill.com and click on the episode. And if you scroll, you'll find everything. She's got a Facebook group for singles. She's got a Facebook group for people in relationships. She's got a YouTube channel. Like I said, she's been posting on YouTube for years. Any question you probably have about relationships is on her YouTube page, which if you're on YouTube right now and you happen to pull it up, it's Marshawn O. And that's M-A-R-S-H-A-U-N space O, like just the letter O. So find her on YouTube, find her on Instagram. Her Instagram is Marshawn underscore O. And, um, and join one of her Facebook groups. So, and then obviously get the book, which we'll put in the show notes. So um, without further ado, I want to bring her on and have her introduce herself as well to you. But Marshawn, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, Whitney, Whitney, thank you so much for having me. Hello, everyone out there. Um, I am just very excited to be here today. And as Whitney already mentioned, I am an author. I'm a life and relationship strategist. I am a wife. I'm a mother. And I am also a Christian. So that's the gist of who I am. And again, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to let's just take a deep dive into conversation today. Yeah, it was really hard to figure out what we were going to talk about today because there's so many things that we can really discuss. I mean, you've been doing this work for a while now, working with clients and writing and, and doing all this sort of digging to find the content that you're going to put on YouTube and help people with. But I feel like self-love is a great place to start, especially when we talk about self-preservation. So can you just tell us what that means to you and why you think it's so important? Yes, self-love is going to be the foundational piece to having any type of relationship, any healthy relationship, specifically romantic business, the ones with your children, the ones obviously with your spouse. You have to know who you are. You have to know what you want. You have to know what you desire. All for yourself first before you can give any extra love or even expect to receive love from somebody from the outside, a potential partner, even your children sometimes. Like you really have to be really in tune with who you are, what you like, what you don't like. Are you able to articulate what you like, what you don't like? If you don't know how to do any of these things, you are going to struggle. So 
working on you, understanding you completely is what it's all about. That's where you have to start. That is your foundation before you move into any other relationships. Absolutely. And that's what I think is really important because I've been single for a while. I've been dating for a while and it is something that is very important. And someone told me a long time ago, they said, Whitney, you know, dating is fun because you get to learn what you like. And I was always just like, "Mm, I mean, like, I guess, but I already know what I like, right? I feel like I already know what I like. But what I realized was the more that I dated and went out with people, the more I realized like things that I didn't know that I didn't know that I liked and didn't like. And then things that I felt maybe I were, I, I was a little bit more willing to to let happen and things that I absolutely, this is a non-negotiable, you will not. Um, and that was part of the dating process for me. So I guess one of my immediate follow-ups questions would be, you know, how do you, what do you recommend for people who are going through that and are trying to decipher what they like and don't like and what maybe they're willing to tolerate and what they're not? Because a lot of times that can be very, very hard to do. Well, you have to be willing to try new things and you don't know if you're going to like it until you actually do that thing that you're questioning. Should I, am I going to like it? How is this going to work out? Just go out and do it. Go out and try it. And I would actually go even further to say, try it more than one time because maybe the first time, because you were so nervous about trying it, it wasn't that great of an experience for you. So go out and try it another time, maybe even with someone else, but try so you're not stuck in a box. So you're not thinking the shoulda, woulda, coulda. Just, you got to put yourself out there. Don't be scared to try different things. And really, since you're in the dating stage, right, (laughs) you could try the same thing, the same activity with someone else, another person, because maybe the first person wasn't that fun. Maybe they were a Debbie Downer, but you want to try this thing again. So go out and try it another time with a different person. So you can have fun. Joy life. Just put yourself out there. Don't be scared to try new things. Take yourself out of your box. I mean, I think for a lot of people that can be a little daunting, either because they are maybe introverted or shy, or maybe because the things that they're trying are things that they're not used to, or that they're, maybe they come from a family or they come from a a culture or background where that's not really the way things are done. So when you're dealing with these sort of internal dialogues and these internal like back and forth, what do you recommend for those people who are like, I don't know, I'm trying to try it, but are a little bit nervous or they just feel like they're going to going against the grain. Because I feel like a lot of times we have to go against the grain a little bit, right? Do something different than our our peers or our parents or people we see on TV in order to get the results that we want. So when it comes to having the confidence to do that, what do you recommend to those women or to those guys out there? Literally just going to do it. And I know, like you said, that might be a little daunting to some of the people out here, but you have to remember that inner voice, which a lot of times is usually the critical inner voice, usually comes from your parent or guardian. And that little voice is already instilled in you. And now you're having to deal with, should I do this? Is it going to be good? Is this going to look good for my parents or my mom or my dad? What are they going to say? about this particular situation. And so what we really have to do is to remember that we are not living our parents' life. We're not living our parents' dream. You have to create your own life. You have to create your own dream. I get it within reason, but when when it comes to trying new things and putting yourself out there, you have to do it. Like literally, you just have to do it. You have to feel the fear and do it anyway. That's how successful people go to the next level. They don't just stand there. Oh, oh, I don't don't know how to do this. I'm not going to try. They say, you know what? I am scared crapless. But I I, I have no idea how I'm going to get from point A to point B. But this is my idea. This is what I'm going to try. And they try it. Yeah, you're going to fail. You're going to fail at some, some, sometimes when you put yourself out there. But by and large, the more times that you do it, the more times you can get over being fearful of doing that thing which translates being less fearful of trying other new things because you're like, hey, I actually didn't kill myself. Hey, I didn't run into a wall. Hey, I didn't fall flat on my face. And even if I did, I had a great time. I'm willing to try this and do this all over again. Put yourself out there and just do it. 
Yeah, no, that makes that makes total sense. You absolutely have to take a risk. And that's part of, you know, the fun of being a grown up and and making those kind of decisions for yourself is being able to say, yeah, no, I'm actually going to do that or I'm not going to do that because of whatever reason. So, yeah, I think that's I think it's important. And that actually ties into the self-preservation part of the conversation, which to me, you know, means making sure that you're not overdoing it um, or underdoing it in a lot of different ways, making sure you're kind of keeping that balance and you're preserving who you are, your values, your ideals, and how you want to show up in the world. So the minute you start to fray or stray from that and get to places that are a little murky or a little weird or a little dark um, or dismal or just distracted from where you typically like to be, that's when you kind of create those problems. So when you're working with someone in regardless of whether they're in a relationship or not, and you see them starting to get a little wobbly with either their values or their focus or anything that pertains to themselves, how do you typically like to coach them through that so that they're preserving who they are and how they want to show up in the world? Well, we take it one step at a time, one day at a time, but we also incorporate little small wins so they can see that they actually can do this scary thing, whether it's making that phone call, whether it's setting up the date or going on the date with someone that they're not too, uh, you know, they're kind of on the fence with this person, but then they go and they have a great time. It's just little small wins. Each and every day we find something that they can win at. And so, so that's each small win is going to um, accumulate into a larger win. So every single day, one small thing, each and every day. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because I mean, any sort of, when you're trying to preserve your your weight, right? If you're on a workout routine, you've been trying to get fit, the same kind of approach would probably be taken, right? To do those things, those little things create those habits that become daily habits that become part of your normal routine that keep you on the straight and narrow, which keeps you kind of balanced and and equalized. I guess if that's the right word to use, but yeah, that makes total sense. So I want to talk about you being a relationship coach, and then we'll kind of talk more about self-preservation and self-love, but I want to talk about what got you into being the coach that you are, and would you say that you have like a specialty? Yes. Um, so what got me into the relationship coaching arena is I didn't get the coaching that I needed from my parents. And I noticed that I was just bumping my head, just constantly bumping my head. I was in a marriage and it did not work out. So I was trying to figure out why that happened because I was a part of like everybody else's dream. What I mean by that is I wanted to grow up. I wanted to have a husband. I wanted to have my 2.5 kids, my dog with my picket fence, like what, what we hear about as far as the American dream goes, I wanted that for myself. And so when my first marriage did not work out, I was like, what is really going on? But then I had to realize that I specifically never got the training. I never got the teaching, the tools, the strategies to be in a relationship, let alone a healthy relationship, and especially not a marriage. So I, I just didn't get any anything. And so even though I grew up around relationships my entire life, I didn't get the proper training. And so just like so many other people who either grew up in dysfunctional relationships or just had no training behind relationships, I came out here and bumped my head just like everybody else. And so after that first marriage did not work out, I just decided to say, hey, you need to figure out what's going on with you because you constantly are dating. You're putting yourself out there and these dating situations are still not working out. And I had to come to the realization that I was the only common denominator in all of those relationships that did not work out. Was I a horrible person? No, but I probably was a horrible dater because they were not sticking around. And so long story short, what I end up doing is interviewing a few of my exes. So I was collecting data, trying to figure out how to be a better woman, a better dater, a better person, and to also understand what men were kind of looking for to get a better handle on that. And after I interviewed the guys, and then I would start 
dating again, then I would um, apply what I was learning from them. And I noticed that the quality of men was completely different. Um, the actual dating situations were different. I was different. I was able to see some of the things that I did not like and some of the things that I did like, like specifically, I didn't realize um, when you're talking to someone that you're not in necessarily in a relationship with them. That has to be qualified and you have to go through like a series of steps. And uh, I just didn't realize there was um, a deeper level to dating in order to get the title, right? I was just kind of going in because only thing I knew was to get in a relationship and then let's go get married. I didn't realize all of the steps that comes in between the dating and then the I do. So I was sick and tired of not knowing. And so I educated myself. And now, then I applied it. And now I teach everybody else, women and women and men, no matter if you're in a relationship or not, I teach you how to really start to love on yourself to understand that this is, that what you're going through is probably normal, but because you didn't learn it at the house or from other, even your peers, because they were going through the same thing, I'm giving you a different set of tools, a different set of strategies so you can actually win at this thing that we call love and stay in a healthy relationship and especially a healthy marriage because my goal is to actually decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate but that all starts with you knowing who you are and loving on yourself like we talked about earlier that's where it all starts i love that yes let's definitely decrease the divorce rate and increase the marriage rate. I mean, why not? It seems like such a powerful thing to do, especially when, you know, we live in a time where people are really wanting connection and they're lacking it, even though we are so quote unquote connected via social media. A lot of people want that connection. It's important. It, it really does. They've done studies on it. And, you know, I know a marriage gets a, a bad rep and people are getting married later and, and things are shifting with the dynamics within relationship, right? The gender roles and the expectations and all of that. Everything's kind of shifting and getting weird, but people still want connection. People still want someone to share their lives with and to have memories with, et cetera. Um, but I do think that it, it, we, we have to, to go at that at a slower pace and there needs to be a little bit less pressure to just kind of be with whomever. I've actually talked about that a lot on the show lately as just people around me, I feel, um, have felt this sort of urge or this pressure, whether it be with society or within their own sort of, you know, paradigms in, in their own social arenas, but people want to get in relationships real quick just to kind of check that box because there are so many things that they want to happen after marriage that they think that they need to do after marriage, like buying a home and having children and, you know, going and doing X, Y, and Z thing and, and building wealth for their future. People think that you have to do all of those things after you get married. But I think when we talk about self-love and self-preservation, we could absolutely talk about the fact that you can do a lot of that stuff right now, whether or not you're in a relationship or not, because, you know, the way Murphy's Law works, you could easily get somebody and they are wonderful, but they have crappy credit. Or, you know, maybe that person isn't able to have children, or maybe that person isn't, um, you know, wanting to build a business with you and stuff like that. So you've got to kind of do it yourself. And I'm not saying just go out and, you know, have a bunch of kids by yourself because, your partner may be infertile. I'm not saying to do that. That's 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 not as extreme as the case I was trying to give. But you know, there's this. There's still a pressure. People feel pressure to get kind of shacked up with somebody and get that get that ring on their hand so that they can X, Y, and Z. So, what do you say to people who feel that societal pressure or that pressure within their own families? Because a lot of us get those questions: When are you getting married? When are you having kids? And you know we have a hard time dealing with it when, especially when it's constant, right? Holiday after holiday, year after year. So what do you say to those people who feel that pressure? I say, do not buy into what everybody else around you is telling you to buy into. Because as much as they mean well, when you just jump into a relationship, you usually don't end up getting the best partner that you could if you would have slowed down and taken your time and got to know the other person. See, a lot of times we're just jumping in because they look good on paper or the first two, three, five months, they were excellent. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Let's jump in into a relationship. Let's move in together. Let's put our bank accounts together. Let's buy homes together. Just slow down, sis. 
slow down, bro. You don't know each other. And, 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 and it takes a lifetime to actually get to know somebody really, really well. But first five months, seven months, a year, two years, three years, slow it down. Get as much information as you can before you say I do. And then when you get into the I do situation, you hate everything about this person. And the next thing you're, you're thinking is, how could I have ever said I do to this person? I don't even like you. Like, really slow down enough to find out if you actually like the person. Do you like being in the room with the person? Can you guys sit in the same room without having a conversation? Meaning that you don't feel that you have to feel the empty space. Are you comfortable with just sitting there in silence with the person? How often do you guys laugh? What is this person's goals in life? Like, literally, let's, let's be real. What's their birth date? What's their favorite color? What, what kind of upbringing did they go through? How many children do they want? Is marriage even on the table? Or are they into long-term relationships or, or not? They just like to do it for now because they, they're so enthralled with the honeymoon stage. And then after the honeymoon stage, here comes the quote-unquote seriousness of the relationship, and then that person is gone, and your feelings are hurt. You have to slow everything down so you can get as clear a picture as you can of this person. Because a lot of people are not taking marriage as serious as we once did. And it's still a very serious union, which is one of the reasons why the divorce rate is so high is because we're just jumping in. And then we feel like, well, I mean, I could just, I could just dump you. I could just leave you. I could just divorce you. I could take care of myself. And yes, all of that is true. But why? Why even do that? And that's another reason why I'm so passionate about this because I didn't have the tools, right? So I get it. You didn't have the tools. Okay, so now you got to do better. And that's where I'm at. I'm in the do better stage. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm definitely trying to do better because that's, that's not the goal. The goal is to not wake up with the ring and realize that you actually cannot stand the person next to you. That is absolutely not the goal. And you would think that with weddings being as expensive as they are, that people would treat it a little bit more seriously than they do, but they don't. And I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head up around that part of it, but I guess that's a different conversation for a different day. So for me, I, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if we spend a little bit more time and the, the hardest part, and I can say this from like literal experience, the hardest part about doing that, taking things slowly and, and really going through that is that a lot of times you do realize that you don't like this person and it feels really irrational. You're like, well, this person on paper is fantastic, right? They have a degree, they have this, they have their own car, they have a job, their credit probably is decent. They're nice, they're friendly, they're not, you know, mentally or physically abusive. Like they just, you know, they check a lot of the good boxes, but there maybe isn't chemistry there. And I think that's a lot of, um, a lot of what people struggle with too, is that they're like, well, I mean, the longer I stick around, the more likely there might be something that I don't like. And so if we were to turn that back onto the person, what would you recommend that that person focus on or do in that moment where they're trying to figure out how to, how to proceed because you feel, you feel kind of conflicted? So what I, what I usually have my clients do is to make a good and bad list. And what I mean by that is write down all of the great slash good qualities that this person has. And then you write down the not so great or bad qualities that this person has. And then understand that even though you have this good and bad list, you're still going to be missing something. Something is still not going to match up because we are imperfect people looking for perfect partners. And that's just not the case right? So make your good and bad list, but still understand there's always going to be something that you do not like about your spouse that you get annoyed about. But here's the thing. If on your good and bad list, your good outweighs your bad or your bad outweighs your good, which is a lot of times when you're on the fence and in that situation that you just described with me, your bad usually is outweighing the good. It's It's time to go. It's time to go. We have to suck it up. And not worry about, oh, my God, I need to start all over. Oh, my God, what is my mom going to say? Oh, my God, we, we actually already got the, the cake and, and the um, invitation are already sent out. So here's the thing. A lot of times, this, this one couple, uh, excuse me, this one person who was married, and um, she was getting ready to get a divorce. And what she said to me is, I knew that I shouldn't have married him, but the invitations were already sent out. So she did it. 
only to get a divorce a few years later. Like you knew it before you said I do. So, so because the invitations were sent out, you do it and then go through this miserable marriage. Why? Why? It was written. It was already written for you that this was going to be a mistake and we're not paying attention to our gut feeling. We are thinking about, am I going to be embarrassed because this one didn't work out? Oh, my parents are still pressuring me to get married. They're still pressuring me to bring home the grandkids. I mean, literally when I was single, let's be all the way real. Can I be real on your show? (laughs) <laughs> before, <laughs> before I got married, because I didn't mention this, this is my second marriage, my last marriage, because I'm doing things different, right? Um, before I got married this time, my dad, yes, I love him to death, but he actually asked me, was I gay? Because I was taking my time. Like, I, I don't want to keep going through this divorce thing. It, it, it takes a toll on you, emotionally, financially, physically, it takes a toll on you. And don't Get in that situation. If you already see the ugliness of this person and how they're already unfolding before you even get to the altar, don't, don't, do not set yourself up for failure. Walk away. Forget how great he looks on paper because he has his doctorate or he's a dentist or he's a lawyer or he's a whatever. If they're not right, they're not right. And your guts, wait, just really quickly, your guts is going to tell you, you have to follow your gut instinct. You have to, or regret it for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And that, I think that ties back into the self-love part, because if you really were working on yourself or you had really done some work on yourself, you would know yourself a little bit better and you would want to take better care of yourself. And um, I actually was at dinner a few days ago with um, a woman that I met at a wine bar and um, she was super sweet. She was there with a friend and they were wine tasting and I've told the story because I was so excited and they, they gifted me a bottle of wine because they found out that I had gotten this new job. And um, one of the things that she had told me recently was just, you know, she had gone into, she was going through a really rough divorce and um, she was, you know, in a new location, in a new job. She was just doing really well and just how happy she was now. But when she told me about her, her relationship with this guy, I mean, she had a lot of the warning signs too, where she knew that he had done some really shady stuff prior to them walking down the aisle and she still went through with it. And I think there were pressure, there was definitely some pressure there from people around her. Um, But that's where I think it's really important to have professionals on your side to help you navigate through this because um, I've had guests on my show. I've had people on my phone. I've, I've met women out and about. And a lot of times I'm like, wow, she could probably really use someone who actually has like more credentials and experience with this particular topic or subject. And that could be a health coach. It could be a relationship coach. It could be a business coach, whatever. Um, Because I do, I'll meet somebody and they've got like this, you know, merchandising company and they're selling product and they've got, you know, different vendors and they've got all these questions or issues that they're coming up with. And I'm like, girl, I do not do product-based business. Mine is all service-based. Like I don't even know where to start with some of that stuff. And I'm like, I wish I knew, you know, someone that they could go to, or if I do know someone they can go to and I refer them, I hope that they take that advice and they, they take that route and they invest in themselves because that's investing in their business and in their future. And getting that additional support can make or break and anything, right? Your relationship, your business, your goals, whatever. And when it comes to relationships, a lot of women, especially the women that are in my age range, right, which is in their 30s, are really like struggling in certain areas and we need support. And maybe it's mindset, maybe it's, you know, having boundaries, maybe it's self-esteem. I know a bunch of people who struggle with their self-esteem and it comes out in their relationships. And I recently had a friend and she was like venting to me and I'm like, girl, that's your, that seems to be your issue is self-esteem. But I don't know how to help you with that because growing up, I didn't, that wasn't my issue. I didn't have, you know, super low self-esteem. I think we all struggle with it at some point, but I didn't have it that bad where I have tools and tricks and, and things up my sleeve where I can tell you, you know, maybe try this or try that. That's where you need to see somebody who's a professional to help you. And that's where I think when it comes to relationships, a lot of us are doing stuff like that, right? We're getting into bonds with people that we know aren't right. You know, just because this person is good in bed does not mean there's somebody that we need to be with long-term. Just because this person is somebody that we want to be with long-term does not mean they're going to necessarily be good in bed. We have to have somebody to kind of bounce things off of. And sometimes our girlfriends and our gay guy friends aren't enough. Like we need somebody 
else. So can you speak a little bit more on the power of having a relationship coach and really when you were struggling, what you could have done with one or what you would have liked to have with someone that was kind of helping you go through that? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know what? I actually just was just having this conversation with, with someone the other day, actually a potential client. And I was asking her, did she know what the benefits are with of working with a coach? And of course she said no. And so I'm going to give you, you guys, your, your, your listeners, the exact same information. So there are several benefits with, of working with a coach. And so did you know that 80% of the people who received coaching re- re- reported increased self-confidence? And then 70% actually improved their work performance, their relationships, all of them. They became more effective with their communication skills. And then the companies that work with coaches also seen an increase, which was 86%. And then also just a, just, just a list of things that working with someone professional, a coach in particular, can help you with, which is seeing your blind spots, overcoming procrastination having someone to talk to and actually say, did you do X, Y, and Z, which is accountability. Giving you proven strategies that they've been already using with their um, previous clients or even current clients that they can also share with you so you can use them in your life. Giving you clarity on your values, erasing your limiting beliefs, which this one is really big because it holds a lot of people back from experiencing new things in life, giving you new skills, right? And then here's this thing, which I'm really good at, which is giving you the cold, hard truth. Because I'm not there to placate you. I'm there to get you to the next level, which is what other coaches should be doing as well. Getting you to the next level. Getting from where you are, which is you're in pain, you're experiencing something that's not sitting right with you. In this case, maybe you're single, but you can't figure out why you keep dating the same guy over and over again or dating the same girl over and over again. So you come to someone with like me and I get you from just dating the same person over and over again with a different face to getting you to who you really need to be with, who would be a better match for you. So you can actually experience the love that you truly want to experience with a better fit for you. A perfect fit for you, but not the perfect person. They're going to be a perfect person for you, but they are they themselves are not perfect. But working with a coach is absolutely going to take you over that hump and get you some clarity, specifically in the areas that you are weak in and that you cannot see, which is what I mentioned again, which is those blind spots. I agree. I absolutely agree because it, it is the same thing with a business coach or, you know, a health coach or any personal trainer. A lot of people who are getting personal training work, you'll see is, um, you know, they're people who they know how to work out, right? They know how to use the machines. They know, you know, how to increase their weights or whatever, but they need that extra support. And there are always going to be blind spots. I think with most of us, unless we kind of become an expert in that field, there's always going to be a blind spot where we could use support or we could use someone else's advice, especially when that person has done more, right? They've spent more time in the gym. They've spent more time in relationships. They've spent more time with this kind of person or with that kind of experience. Um, we can really use somebody else's knowledge and, um, and expertise to help us. I mean, that's, for me, you know, we look at hiring people all the time, right? We look at hiring a plumber to come to our house because we don't know shit about plumbing, right? We, we look to our dentist to do our teeth because we don't, we're not dentists. We don't know anything about orthodontics or whatever that stuff, any of it, right? We hire people to help us with the things that we don't know enough about or, or things that we need help with. And, um, and I think the same thing, we need to start treating a lot of this interpersonal stuff like that because it ends up costing us way too much in the end. And that again, goes back to the self-preservation bit where when we look at, you know, how do I stay sane? How do I keep this level of, of growth with an upward sort of trend where we're continuing to grow, we're continuing to trend positively within ourselves? That's where you've got to try to your best to keep that going. And it doesn't stay that way if we're not investing in ourselves in some way or another. And I'm not necessarily trying to pitch coaching. I just personally wish that we treated coaching more like we treated other things, right? Like other sort of service-based 
um, type things like consulting, right? Getting someone to come to our house to help with the plumbing, getting someone to help us with our eye, eyesight, getting someone, someone to help us with whatever it is, right? We are super quick to do that, but we're super slow to do it interpersonally. And that's why a lot of us, I think, are struggling. Um, and just like when we talk about therapy, right? A lot of people have this stigma that asking for help means we're weak or we don't know, or we're just not that smart or whatever the connotations are, um, that we're better than that. I don't understand that one personally, but a lot of people feel that way. They think that, well, I know me better than me. So what's a stranger going to know? That's the kind of mindset that to me is super skewed and it's going to keep us in places that we don't want to be. And again, I'm trying to self-preserve. I'm trying to keep myself moving, trending to hop upwards to the top here, right? Not to say that you're going to max out on the personal development and the work that you're putting in for you, but at least try to trend upwards, right? And not fall backwards by not listening to your intuition, by not listening to um, the people around you, by not listening to your gut, by not listening to the signs. Um, there's a bunch of memes and, and stuff out there that that kind of joke to, you know, the red flags that guys will give and how we'll just ignore them. Um, that's something that we, it's really nice to have that second opinion to be able to discern what's a red flag and what's not, what's a problem, what's not, what's going to be a problem down the line and what's not. That's where to me, having that um, unbiased, I call it an unbiased third party. That's where that happens. And that's where that kind of um, I think yields us much better results than just winging it on our own or talking to our girlfriends who have had, you know, really crappy pasts and who have never dated someone like this person or have never, you know, they don't have the same dreams as you or the same goals as you or the same outlook on life as you. You know, we're talking to people who haven't walked the walk that we are trying to walk or talk the talk that we're trying. We, we do that. And then we get mad when we get shitty advice from people or we get information that's just kind of biased in a negative way. I absolutely recommend getting support and whatnot. Now you wrote a book um, and, and your book is really, really, really cool. And I remember going through it when it first came out and you did your book release and all of that. But can you just talk about how your book has helped people and what it was like going through that? Because I know that's been a big part of, of where you've spent time and have been helping people. Sure, of course, absolutely. So again, I'm just going to tell you guys the title, Reignite Your Relationship by 7X. The full title is So You Can Get Back to Making Love and Enjoying Your Spouse. And so, yes, how it has helped people. You know, I, I, when, I, when I first released my book, um, one lady who was actually in London, she says, um, she wrote a review for me and she said that her and her ex-boyfriend were actually reading the book together and they didn't, they, they decided not to get back together. However, they were able to communicate with one another on a deeper level because of my book. They actually were reading it together and they were discussing the discussion points and actually doing the homework that I hit, that I have inside of the book. So it was really helping their relationship. And then there was also another couple that has read the relationship, uh, read, read the book as well and said that it really, really helped them with being intentional and showing more respect for each other. And of course, uh, within their selves. And then spending more quality time with each other as well, because we get into our routines, we get into our ruts, and we forget to show up and give our spouses or give our partners the same energy that we have given everybody outside in the world that we're hanging out with or that we are working with. So we get dressed up to go to work to see all of these different people and they end up seeing our best side. They end up getting the best sides of us and the best um, energy from us. And then when you go home, with, and I've been guilty of this too, so when we go home, then our spouse, our partner gets the leftovers, as I like to call them. And so this book, my book in particular, helps you to just remember what you need to do in order to have that relationship and re reignite and, of course, re-spark the fire. And so just really quickly, I wanted to give you um, two to three chapters in here, um, titles. So loving, your, loving yourself, which goes into the, te into the theme today. So you got to love yourself and then deal with your fear and your baggage because most people, they just jump into the relationship, not realizing that that stuff that keeps coming up is what, what I call your baggage that you have not dealt with, which is why it keeps smacking you in the face in every relationship that you get into. 
maybe 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 you are the insecure person and so you're like why is he over there talking to her and every, every that's that's your conversation every single time that you get into a new relationship you get insecure that your guy or your girl is over there talking to the opposite sex and why but you never realize that you're actually sabotaging your own relationship because you have not dealt with the baggage that you keep dragging from one relationship to the next. And what I like to say is God is knocking you upside the head until you actually learn the lesson. So you're going to keep going through this same thing with Sally, Sue, and Megan, all of those people until you actually get the, get the, get the message, get the lesson. In this case, stop being so insecure. Yep. Insecurity has a huge, it's a huge piece to um, a lot of, I think, our issues. And that I used to think that was only a female thing, but it's absolutely not. There's a lot of guys with insecurity issues and it's, it's pretty frustrating the way that people kind of present them and the way that it can show up. But again, I think it goes back to doing that self-work. And I know in this show, we talk a lot about different books out there and we talk different strategies and courses and programs and people that we follow that we look to for those stories and guidance and stuff like that. I know you're a big fan of Lisa Nichols and so am I. I know she's been doing a lot of stuff and she continues to do a lot of work to help people have the confidence and the courage to just do stuff that they really want to do. And her motivational speaking has been phenomenal to me. So I'm very curious, you know, I know you look up to Lisa Nichols, but when it comes to hitting your goals, to being a better person, to showing up as a more solid Marshawn. Who do you look up to um, right now in the world? You know, I, I never have one, one solid person uh, because I listen to so much motivational um, speeches and I read so much information. I'm always taking in content. So I don't have one in particular, but I will say that I, I am loving um, Dr. Miles Monroe right now because I'm actually reading his book and he's talking about understanding the purpose and power of men. And so it's just really, really important for me to just take a deep dive into all arenas when it comes to relationships. So um, yes, hopefully I answered your question, but yeah, I don't have one person in particular because I just take in so much all the time. No, I know you do. We talk about it. We talk about it a lot, but yeah, I think it's good to have at least somebody on your radar and and see what they're up to, whether it's reading or, because we all kind of digest information in different ways, which is why I'm a big proponent of like podcasting because I love the audio part of it. And I just, for me, that resonates, but a lot of people still love to just like pick up a book and read it with their hands, like not on Kindle. Some people love their Kindles. Some people love going to events and showing up in person. I know you you and I are kind of mixed when it comes to that. I've I like it all. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I go with the flow. Sometimes I have the book in person. Sometimes it's on my phone. Sometimes I show up. Sometimes I do all three. Um, But I think you're right. I think keeping the motivation and and keeping that in your life is really important, Um, especially as we're trying to become better and we're trying to do better and we're trying to grow and put ourselves in the right places. So that makes total sense. Now you've got your two Facebook groups, one for singles, one for people in relationships. I'm going to link those, but can you just talk a little bit about why you have both groups, what people can expect, and and how they can join? Sure thing. So for my super single people and those who are dating, and, and I say super single because maybe you are in the mind frame that you, you know that there are some things that you need to work on, and you're currently not dating anybody. There's nobody on your radar. So those are what I think super single people. And those who are actually just dating, you're trying to figure out, do you like this person? you're not quite in a relationship yet, or you're in a very early relationship. So I have a Facebook group called Dating to Marriage. Again, that's Dating to Marriage on Facebook, where you can come and get some information so you can get um, prepared for the types of questions, the information, what you should already know, like those tools and strategies that I was talking about that I did not receive, or even like it was nowhere on my radar, that's what this group is going to help you to decipher, get you in the right mind frame of what you should be expecting while you're dating, going into marriage. So that's dating to marriage. And then for those who are in long-term relationships or who are already married, but you know that you could do better in your marriage. You could do better in your relationship. You need to connect better on a deeper level. You know, is this something that is going right? 
Um, should I be dealing with this? Is this okay? Is this normal? You know, um, <laughs> uh, do you think I should leave? Do you think I should stay? Like all of those questions kind of come up when you really deep dive into the relationship. So I addressed a lot of that there. And that one for those who are in long-term relationships or married is called Relationship Boot Camp 101. So depending on where you fit in, go ahead and, um, you know, hit that subscribe button, you know, follow me there. And I will definitely enter you into the group. Look forward to seeing you there. Sweet. Yeah. It's always good to be a part of a group. And I think too, you know, even if you are somebody that's kind of shy and more introverted, if you are going through stuff in relationships, it's always really nice to be in groups like that because you can either post it or you can see if someone else has posted it. And if Marshawn has answered or if someone else has commented and get feedback that way. And sometimes that can be enough and that can spark a conversation with yourself where you're like, okay, well, that person's going through the same thing, or that's where I feel like this relationship is trending or blah, 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 blah. And then you can make a decision without having to put yourself out there or without having to put your relationship on blast. Cause I know that can be very daunting to people, but these groups are really, really, it's the same thing with a lot of the business entrepreneur groups. You'll, you'll want to say, Hey guys, you know, I had this thing and you know, maybe you wrote a book and it just wasn't doing well, or you don't know how to get it on Amazon, or you don't know how to do, you know, who, who knows how to, how to find somebody that can help you with your cover right? Your, your book art, your cover art. Those are questions you can ask in those groups. Same thing with, you know, stuff like this. Hey, I'm going to go online and start doing a dating profile. Do you guys like these pictures? That's a good one too. I've been helping my friends um, set up their online dating profiles and some of them have never done it before. And they're like, I don't know what to put. I don't know. Is this picture good? I don't know. Does this show my personality? Do I look kind of weird? Is this kind of slutty? I don't know. These are pictures that you could post that you can, you know, you can get feedback in these groups for stuff like that. So just as an FYI, I recommend joining one of them, depending on where you're at and, um, and getting that support and feedback. Cause you don't have to do this by yourself. That I think is really, really, really important. Part of the self-love journey is realizing who's in your corner and who you can have in your corner and being able to place them there and vice versa. So you need support. You don't have to do any of the dating stuff by yourself. It is exhausting. I know that from experience and it can be really Really? Okay. So something else too with relationship coaching is I feel like a lot of times, um, and there was actually, we talked about this on my last episode on the show. If you haven't listened to it, check it out with Ashley Gordon. You know, we talked a lot about how in Sex in the City, you know, she's kind of complaining at one point about um, Charlotte, not Charlotte, Miranda's character was complaining a lot about you know, everyone's always talking about the guys are dating. It's always this guy, this guy, that guy, this problem, this problem. And we're just so enthralled with our dating lives. But when you have somebody that you can talk to, that's a professional, it kind of makes all that chatter kind of lessen because you don't want your, you know, three girlfriends, ex, ex, um, not excuses, but like their feedback or their commentary. You already have someone that you've already talked it through and that you trust and that can give you that feedback. So you don't have to like circulate the same story 60 different times. That's something that I personally have struggled with where I'm dealing with something with this guy and I'm like, uh, I don't know. And then my girlfriends are there and they're like, what's going on, Whitney? And I'm pissed off. So I tell them, but then it's like, we just got done talking about something else with this guy two days ago, or there's another issue 24 hours later. And it's like, we're constantly just talking about these guys or these gals all of the time. And I think that can really, journaling also really helps if you don't have, you know, maybe the time or the funds for coaching, but journaling really does help to get it out. So you feel like you've done that brain dump, but I really think that I know having a coach can help with some of those conversations. And I didn't bring it up last week in the conversation because it may not have been necessary, or maybe I did bring it up. I don't think I did, but I will bring it up here in that you want to circumvent talking about the same dude over and over and over, or dealing with the same insecurities that you have that you don't feel comfortable sharing with other people that are absolutely there that maybe everybody already knows. You can talk to a coach about that stuff. So anyway, um, Marshawn, are you accepting new clients, by the way? I guess since I'm like clearly pitching coaching, (laughs) <laughs> Figured out, yeah. I love it. Sure. I actually do have two slots available right now. So yes, yes. All right, guys, there you go. So if you go to her website, which I will link, um, you can check her out. You know, if you are interested, this sounds like something that you'd want help with. I will tell you from experience, Marshawn is definitely very level-headed and she remains unbiased as far as when I'm talking to her and I bring up relationship issues, you know, she'll, she'll give me feedback. It's always unbiased. It's never like, you know, jaded or filled with a ton of, you know, 
past issues. You know what I mean? How, you know how when you talk to somebody and they're clearly kind of still butthurt about it, like, that never happens. Um, she's a professional and she's been working with a lot of people. So um, if you need help, get it. If you're not sure, reach out to us, to me, to her, whomever. Um, make sure you're following us on social media, by the way. So, you know, I've got two accounts. I've got the Network and Spill account and I've got the Whitney Danielle coaching account on IG. Uh, make sure you're following Marshawn at Marshawn underscore O on IG and just tag us. If you're listening, tag us, screenshot your phone, whether you're on Spotify or, or Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, wherever you're listening, definitely um, screenshot it and tag us. And let us know if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, we're here to answer them. We're here to help. And um, yeah, if you know somebody who's looking to explore self-love a little bit more, who needs that, that boost, and you feel like this conversation might help them, absolutely share this episode. And if you're feeling really generous, you can go to the Apple Podcasts app, search for Network and Spill, scroll all the way down and give me a five-star review. And you can put in the comments that you listen to this episode, that you're going to get your shit together, that you want to do more this year around self-love. Um, and, uh, and just say something fun in the comments so that I know it's you. You know, I will be running... Um, different promos and giveaways and stuff this, this summer, this spring, I'm really excited to do that. So stay on with me, stay focused with me. And, um, I feel like Marshawn, you might have a free coaching session that you might be willing to give away. So what would, what would that look like for people listening if they're interested? Yeah. So I am willing to give away one free coaching session to the guest of Whitney's choice and what it looks like. It is one 90 minutes, take a deep dive into what's actually happening with you currently so we can eliminate as many of those issues, problems in that 90 minute session. And of course, if you want to talk about it further with us working together long term, then we can do that. But this session is for you to get rid of some of the clutter in your life, specifically in your relationship life. Even if you're not dating, I'm, I'm sorry, even if you're not in a relationship, but you still want to get the pre-relationship advice, let's just get rid of that baggage, some of that yucky stuff that's holding you back, that you don't realize is holding you back. So I'm totally willing to, you know, want one session. And, and again, Whitney will pick the winner. Okay. I like a good challenge. Now, guys, we did not plan this. I had no idea this was going to happen. But I will tell you <laughs> this. I will tell you this. 90 Minutes with Marshawn is pretty magical. You can get a lot done in 90 minutes. So um, I really recommend it. If you or someone you know needs some coaching in that, in this regard, definitely put yourself in the running. Um, I'll figure out the details later. If you're interested in your hearing this, DM me over at Whitney Danielle Coaching on IG. And I'll just pick a name out of a hat. Actually, I have a website that I go to. It's like a a little um, spin wheel thing and you put in everybody's names and then it spins it and it'll automatically pick a name. So it's completely, I can record myself doing it. It's completely like random. I don't do it. And um, that person will win the 90 minute session, but 90 minutes is gold. I can't believe you're doing 90 minutes. That's so nice. Yeah. You know what? That is one of, here's the thing. I do 90 minutes on purpose because at one hour, the person is just warming up to you. You guys are just vibing and then it's over. And I don't like that when I'm with my coach. So I make sure that I'm giving you more because here's, here's, the, here's the sad truth on my end. Sometimes we even go over the 90 minute because I want to make sure that you are complete before we get off that call. Hmm. I can dig it. And I, I know, I know that's ex exactly how you roll. It could easily go over the 90 minutes if you're just getting started <laughs> and that person is having a breakthrough. Cause like you said, sometimes it takes that long to get warmed up. We've all been on dates that maybe we had planned to do it for just a little bit, but the more you start to get to know somebody, you're like, damn, this is actually really fun. And then, you know, you have a breakthrough, you have this epiphany, you realize how much you have in common, what you like about that person, et cetera. So yeah, 90 minutes, it's, it's a beautiful gift. I'm sure the value for that is a lot of money. So um, again, if you are interested, I personally have been coached by Marshawn multiple times and um, I've always walked away feeling better. A lot of times we, we think that when we put ourselves on blast or we share our dirty secrets or our dirty laundry, that that person is going to make us feel some type of way or is going to make us do something that we don't want to do. Oh, well, you need to leave him, girl, because what our girlfriends do. Oh, you need to leave him, girl. He's nothing. He's trash, blah, 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 blah. You're wasting your time. We hear all of that from our friends and it can be really hard. And um, I definitely feel like if you're in a situation where you're unsure you could get support and you won't walk away feeling like shit. Now, I'm not saying that you may not be sad, 
or you may not feel some type of way because she is going to keep you honest or she's going to keep herself honest. But I think it's some of this stuff is necessary. So if you're feeling called, definitely DM me. Um, I will put the official rules somewhere and we'll just get this popping. And if you are interested in seeing more about how Marshawn acts and what, um, and just how she rolls, we will be going live on Instagram after this episode airs. So catch us. If you miss the IG live, then just peep us somewhere else or peep her YouTube channel. Like I said, it's Marshawn O on YouTube. She's got tons of videos and you can see her, her personality, her mannerisms, the way that she speaks, all of that is all on YouTube and it's very clear. And you may get, even get like some of your questions answered there, but um, the support is is unmatched and it's amazing. So Marshawn, is there anything else that we miss that you wanted to say? Anything else that you wanted to add in before we say goodbye? Yes, I'm going to do a shameless plug for my book, Pick It Up on Amazon. <laughs> Again, the title is Reignite Your Relationship by 7X, so you can get back to making love and enjoying your spouse. And then also just for your listeners out there, just to know, go with your gut, listen to your gut. You are more special than you even realize, than you even give yourself credit for. You can do all things, all things. Just don't stop. That includes dating. Don't stop. Don't just jump on the first thing because he looks nice. She looks nice, has a great body. She has a great body. Slow things down so you can truly see who the person is and the rose-colored glasses can actually come off so you can see who they truly are, how they're showing up to the world. That's it. Yeah, don't stop. All right, y'all. If you're interested in the coaching session, DM me, uh, Whitney Danielle Coaching. Stay tuned for my IG stories. I will post some rules on on how to apply for that. I will choose a name. I'll record it. I'll put that up and I will let Marshawn know who the winner is. If you are listening to this the weekend that it drops, congratulations. You've already won because you'll be able to see us live on IG only a few days after this. If you're listening and you've already missed the IG, no worries. Catch us later. We will do, I will do a lot more of bringing back guests and having them on for different things, whether I do a panel or I just do it some kind of a throwback or some sort. So Marshawn will be back on the show at some point in time. Catch her book. I will link everything in the show notes per usual. And if you have any questions, comments, or some fan love, definitely send it our way. We always appreciate that. Marshawn, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. I appreciate you. All right, Whitney. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody else who's out there listening, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day, out of your busy schedule to listen in to get some of these jewels, get some of these gems so you can apply them in your life. Thank you. Yes. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers.